praise the Lord, mightiest prophet of the Lord. Amen. Now, um, listen, Pastor Sophie, the Lord has spoken with me. The Lord Jehovah, Jehovah has shofet. The Lord, the judge, he has spoken with me today. The Lord, the judge that you see in the book of Judges, chapter 11, when is he has spoken with me today about a tremendous event that is about to take place on the earth. I see um, I see a place, and this place has a meeting. I see a meeting taking place there. And when I look within that vicinity, I see a slight hill in front of me, and that hill has many trees there. There are many trees. It's like a homestead or something, or some settlement with many trees in a small hill ahead of me here, tall trees. And uh, that place looks more like the United States of America. Uh, I think this is the United States of America, but anyhow, these tall trees ahead of me, like the, the homestead there, or like some settlements are there. And I was having a meeting on this other side. I could see a meeting right uh, about two kilometers or so from there, a plane like this, and there's another hill that rises on on my right hand side. If I'm facing that place I'm talking about where the trees are, then the other hill, slight hill is on my left. And uh, so at that place, um, at that hill there, all of a sudden a phenomenon takes place. All of a sudden, out of the ground gushes, I don't know whether the cloud came from above and hit it first. It looks more like a cloud came from above and hit the place, the place where the are. But out of the ground gushes dust, black dust, and a lot of running begins. It is shocking. It's a, a lot of dust. So the Lord put me already there. The Lord has taken me into the future. I've already lived that day. So we begin to run. I begin to run also for my life. There was a big panic. We were running for our lives. And uh, as we were running, as the dust, the dust was coming our way from that place where the trees were, was the hill there, the settlement, when the big cloud from above came and hit the soil, a huge black dust and columns and, 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 and waves of black dust began to flow towards us. We began to run away. And all of a sudden, then water also appeared from the ground and began to flood, chase us. So we began to run. I ran towards the hill. I began to run towards the hill that... If I face that place, it would be on my left. The hills would be on my left. But if I'm running away from them, the hills would be on my right. So I ran towards the hills because the water was coming full speed to flood everything else. These are the homes that were ahead of me here where I was. So there is a tremendous distress that is coming. A wonder. It looked to me more like it is somewhere in the Americas. It's in the Americas. It is in the Americas. The boat it looks like it is in the United States of America. So this is the kind of distress that is coming. Again, I see something very big, more dark cloud, coming in the form of a funnel. It hit, it hit the land where there are tall trees and there is a settlement, there are homes there. But when this cloud hits the ground, out of the ground comes a lot of dust, dark dust, dark black dust, comes out of the ground, and when that happens, out of the ground, and black dust out of the ground, then there's a lot of running, the fumes and dust 
people are closing their noses. I was running and closing my nose. We were running away as I was closing my nose, uh, running away, closing the nose uh, in fear that we would inhale the dust. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, water also came from the ground and began to come high speed flooding the homes. And we were running away, so I went towards the hill. And the emergency care people announced people get evacuated, evacuate with, with, with microphones announcing. So this is what is coming to the earth. The Lord has spoken with me about this. Now, the book of Daniel, chapter 12, speaks very, very clearly. Daniel, the end time prophet of the Lord. Uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 12, speaks very, very clearly about this hour and this time. We see that this is a very historic time in the history and the life of the earth and the church. And in that scripture, the Lord says that there will be a distress at that time, meaning in these days, there will be a distress at that time, meaning these days before the return of the Messiah, Christ Jesus, my Lord. And he says that at that time there will be distress, and parallel distress, an equal distress, as has not happened before since from the beginning of the creation of the nations. And then he says that within the midst of that distress, those whose names will be found written in the book of life, those whose names will be found written in the book of life will be delivered. So this is such an awesome scripture. It's hope for us as Christians when we look at the and is about to happen uh, prophesied. We look at them our spiritual eyes. We use our spiritual eyes to look at them. And the Bible says that when you see these things, shall you lift up your hands and look up into the sky and know that your deliverance has now come. Your deliverance is here. The coming of the Messiah, the coming of the Messiah is now in hand, at hand. We are living through a This is the most exciting time in which to be a Christian, to be born again. All of these are the landmarks, they are the demarcations on the prophetic timeline of God. That God, Almighty. His time Bible. That's the zero count down to the coming of the Messiah. So you can imagine for those who are Christians, this should be reason for us to be happy. Why? Because we know surely the earth is not our eternal home. Woe unto those who have invested unto this earth, who have relied on the creature, 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 created things who have worshipped creature, created things, objects created by God, homes, the earth, world of the earth, the land, property. He's saying that blessed are those that will now hearken to the requirements and the ordinances of the Lord, the righteous decree, the righteous requirements of God, the holy ordinances of God. And in this tremendous prophecy that I'm releasing today to the four ends of the earth, of what is coming to the earth, you can clearly see that the Lord is actually is giving forth, he's projecting forth, he's announcing forth his holy oracles. He's saying, look, I am holy, so be holy for I am holy, and prepare for the coming of the Messiah. For without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. These are the signs, the distress that Jesus himself talked about in the book of Matthew 24, when he talked about this unparalleled distress that will hit the earth. All of a sudden now, where people are, where there is land, I don't know whether there are homes in that place, but now look, I see something like a tornado, a cloud of tornado from heaven, from above the skies, hit that soil, and I see the dust. I do not know whether it is the dust that came up and fumed like a, like a cloud, like a funnel of cloud. 
It looks more like it could be the dust, the soil uh, within from the soil, the explosion of that dust went up in fumes and joined with the sky, fumes of dark cloud, and that's why we were running when the dust was now spewing this side, and then all of a sudden it became water flooding, more like volcanic water, but pure water really. Water flooding. We were afraid as we ran. As I ran, I was afraid that the water could be hot also. Huh? People running to the hills. And he said, at this hour, we are living at a critical threshold. We are living on the verge of eternity. The earth is living on the verge of eternity. And the Lord is saying that this earth will come to destruction. Woe unto those that have trusted and trusted themselves unto the earth. Woe unto those that have depended on this earth. Because he's saying, for all those that are created by Jehovah, those that are obedient unto the Lord, this is the hour now to pursue righteousness. The hour to make amends in our lives. The hour to trust in Jesus, to be born again. Uh, being born again is holy. This thing you see in the church in Australia, where Christians think that there is another version, the Australian standard version of Christianity, where it is jumping and dressing the way you want, and worldliness. This thing you see in Europe, New Zealand, you see in Asia, you see the church in the United States, North America, Canada, Central America, South America, the church in the islands, in the Caribbean. This thing you see where the church in Africa, everywhere, there is the, the trend where they are bent to modernity. They are leaning to modernity in salvation. Christianity, according to 2017 standard version, modernism and modernity, where women dress the way they want, they dress with nudity in the church, immoralities in the house, abortions are in the house, the lasting and what worship has become a place where now there is sexual lust going on in the house. The Lord is saying that the genuine, the true worship experience that Jesus inaugurated on that cross is holy worship, holiness, holiness, righteousness. And that the Lord is separated from sin and he requires of those that worship him to also separate from sin. Because when you say it, the Lamb of God is blameless, then later, that being the name of the Lamb, the Lamb that is Christ Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, Christ Jesus, my Lord, that went to the cross and redeemed the nations, redeemed humanity from sin, that his middle name is blameless. Blamelessness. And he said, owing to that, now the followers, the Christians, Christ's followers, also unto them is required that blamelessness that we should live our lives under the influence of the Holy Spirit and make sure that we make every effort to shun sin, to reject sin, to have zero tolerance to sin, to refuse sin. And we're living at such a tremendous time. Look at what is happening in the body of Christ. Look at the resurrection of a dead body that is being celebrated in Kenya today right now. Tremendous historic. Look at how the Lord has even slowed down that resurrection of Mama Rosa in Kenya. And the whole world is now aware and celebrating globally. Look at the way the Lord delayed how she, when she was resurrected. When he said, the he that speaks with you to resurrect her, she could not even walk. She could not even sit up. She had to ask, can you help me sit? And then look now, she was blind for six days after her resurrection. The eyes were still dead. After six days is when the eyes opened. Tremendous sign and wonder of this age. This is the most exciting and the most powerful and the most interesting time to ever be born again as a Christian, a Christ follower. A worshiper of Jehovah. This is the most beautiful time when the Lord has used this resurrection right now to affirm 
and confirm to all the nations of the earth that surely there is no other God except Jehovah, the only God of Israel, the God of heaven, because he alone could resurrect a dead body. Other gods, their gods have died and not been resurrected. Their prophets have died and never resurrected. But now when the Lord sends his mightiest prophet, he gives him authority and power over death to resurrect a dead body. Aye. What an exciting time to be a Christian. Because surely, yes, now it's known that only Jehovah is God. He is the true living God. And there is no other God. Meaning at this hour, all the other gods on the earth must shut down. Hey. And that's why the Lord is saying that look, look at the resurrection. The tremendous moment in the church, in the body of Christ right now. The resurrection of Mama Rosa. When the Lord said we resurrect that dead woman, that dead corpse, stinking and stenched. Stinking and smelling the death. The stench of death. The death. And it's not on the resurrection. You see that the eyes become alive after six days. The ears begin to hear after six days. After 14 days, she's eating. She can't go to the restroom. The intestines that were rotten. Only after 14 days, they're resurrected. You can see she has no memory. After some days, then she can now see her kids and remember. And look at the words she speaks when she goes live on air. She addresses the earth and tells them, look, this is the messenger from heaven. Do not miss this. Say, only Jehovah is God. Listen to him. Only he leads us to Jesus, the kingdom of the Messiah. What an amazing time to be a Christian. What a beautiful time in the house of the Lord. And in Kenya, this celebration will continue the sermon of the church, the praise of the church, the worship of the church in Kenya has now changed eternally. Eternally. The sermons are now about resurrection. And yes, indeed, that is the hope that the Lord has given the church, meaning now for all those that believe in Christ Jesus, for all those that are in this ministry of repentance and holiness and have obeyed the words of the Lord spoken by this voice of God, they now have hope beyond death. Hey. Now they can live. Now they can surpass death that is the tremendous sermon that is happening in the church now. So that's why when the Lord brings up this prophecy of a huge out-of-the-soil explosion of dust, like fumes, like as if a cloud came and touched the soil, and people are running, I'm running there. And then water begins to exude out, burst out of the soil, and distress consumes the land. That is beauty. That's a beautiful moment on the earth. He's saying, we are waiting for the kingdom of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the messenger that prepares the way, is here. And that gives us joy, because the coming of the Messiah then has drawn nigh, has drawn nearer than before. How awesome. The dead are now resurrecting. Tremendous. And I've seen another resurrection also. So it's on and on and on, and the greater revival, the greater wonder that the Lord promised is now taking place. Many, many, many millions in Kenya now are returning to the Lord. This church alone, this church, this ministry where I'm standing and speaking now, people have avalanched us. People have come in their largest millions, they joined now, only to this resurrection. And so the Lord is saying, let all the nations now begin to worship Jesus in holiness. Worship God the Father through Christ Jesus in holiness. Because yes, indeed, Christ Jesus defeated death on the cross. On the cross. And the testament to that defeat.
spirit of death more than 2,000 years ago now has become real in Kenya, real in the body of Christ with the resurrection of this dead corpse. Now we know she's called Mama Rosa. How awesome in 2017 to realize the gains that the Messiah made for us on the cross at Calvary, that now he sends his messenger that prepares the way with authority and power and enter the realm of the dead and snatch the dead from the jaws of death and bring back and defeat death to testify that yes, Jesus defeated death. Hey! Prepare the way, beloved people. Prepare the way. I have seen the Messiah coming. I have seen my Lord coming. And God the Father has sent me to defend the ministry of the Messiah, the blood of the Messiah, the cross of the Messiah, because the kingdom of the Messiah is now near. May those who have ears or Lord of here now turn away from sin. Now question the immorality in the church. Now question the falsehood you see in the church. Question the false prophets. Question your false apostles. This is the hour now when the church has to make gains on righteousness and holiness. And those that will hearken to this voice, you will see the glorious eternal kingdom of God. You too will now defeat death. The Lord bless you. This is he about whom the Bible spoke, about whom the scriptures wrote that the Lord shall send a messenger to prepare the way for the Messiah. Shalom. Thank you.